Hello and welcome to the Worldly Bloke channel. Today I'll be reviewing this all-in-one 412T flight controller from Nameless RC. So whether you like it or not, 2019 was the year of the Tiny Whoop, Cine Whoop and Toothpick Quad. They're everywhere, to the point they're trying to push the specs so far the quads are getting too bloated with 4K HD cameras and they're just not as much fun to fly as they were. But toothpick quads are great and you can fly them just about anywhere and have a real blast. The biggest problem with these quads is the all-in-one flight controllers. They mostly use the Crazy Bee V2 or V3, which when it works is totally awesome but they do fry pretty often and I've got a few dead ones lying around here. Mostly it seems to be the 3070 Ti 911 DC to DC buck converter that fails. That's the built-in 5 volt back. And I did a video a while ago that shows how I replaced this on a dead Mobula 7. But that's not the whole problem. The PCBs aren't that well laid out and the teeny winny pads are a pain to solder, especially if you're a beginner. But here we've got the new version of the Nameless RC 412 board, and this is the T version, so make sure you order the right one. NLRC consulted Kebab FPV on the layout for this board to make it more suitable for a toothpick or a tiny whip build. It's an STM32 F411 based flight controller with an MPU6000 gyro and you can run it off 2 to 4S LiPos. And the battery wires and the XT60 are already soldered and have got this low ESR capacitor fixed. But this needs to be the other end of the wire to work really at suppressing noise. And the mounting points are in the corners on a 26.5 millimeter pitch, so it's just like a crazy bee to fit. It may just drop in, you never know. You get a five volt 2.5 amp back, an inverted and non-inverted S-Bus port, so it's easy to choose between something like an FR Sky XM or a TBS Crossfire receiver, and you don't lose a UART to connect to. And you get the Betaflight AT7456E based OSD, a buzzer and programmable LED connections. There's two UARTs, so one can be used for the receiver, FR Sky, TBS Crossfire, R9M or Spectrum, and the other one you can use for smart audio. The 4-in-1 ESC will deliver 12 amps continuous and 15 amps peak using D-Shot 600. So it's all fairly standard for one of these small quad all-in-one flight controllers. But what makes it a bit different is the way the board has been laid out. There's through holes here if you want to use headers and connectors for your motors, but there's also pads which are larger and easier to solder. And they're on both sides of the board, so you can choose which way you want to wire them. And as we all know, getting everything squeezed into a tiny whoop or a toothpick quad is a challenge, so anything that gives you options is a great idea. The USB connector is in a much better place next to the battery connectors and is pushed out a bit and just overhangs the edge of the board, which gives you a little bit more room. So this is the front of the board here. And starting here, we've got the LED and the ground pad and the buzzer positive and the switching negative next to it. Along here is the 5 volt back output, again with a ground right next to it, RX1 and TX1, which is UART1, to connect your receiver to. And there's an inverted S bus, so you can connect your XM Plus or RXSR. And just in here, this round pad is the 3.3 volts for your spectrum receivers. And moving on around, these connectors here, you can put capacitor on if you want another low ESR capacitor, and we've got the mounting pins for M2 and M1 motors. And you can use these to solder connectors or just use the larger solder pads, which like I said, you can see are on both sides of the board, which is quite nice. Next, you've got the UART2 input and output, TX and RX2, and that can be used for smart audio 
and then you've got video in and video out and five volts and ground for your FPV camera. All nicely positioned there. That's simple, but effective. And just round here on this side, we've got the M3 and the M4 motor pads. So all in all, this looks like an awesome replacement for the flaky Crazy Bee boards and will more or less just drop in as a replacement to your existing quads. So how reliable will it be? Well, only time will tell, but it does look very promising. And I'm glad NLRC haven't tried to incorporate an onboard receiver like the Crazy Bees do. This means they're just making things harder for themselves with more manufacturing complications. Plus, I've never found the clone receivers are any good. At least using your own, you've got a bit more control over the quality. And I always conformally coat my flight controllers after the last landing in wet grass that fried my Mobula 7. So that would have been nice. On this side, we've got all the FETs, nothing much to look at there. And this is part of the butt controller here. And I'm really glad to see NLRC have released this and hopefully it'll make our quads that bit more reliable. As always, thanks for watching. And if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit, then please consider subscribing to the channel for updates. I'll see you next time.